Hey everybody, it's me, Gregor Manorino, on a Saturday, doing my Markets A Look Ahead video segment. I'm kind of enjoying doing this, and it seems like a lot of you out here like it too. Um, so, what I'm going to try to do here with this video today uh, is, is put a perspective on a few things that we're, we're watching unfold right before our eyes, and I'm also going to... And I'm going to hate to do this, seriously, uh, but I've gotten so many requests for it. Some of you out here want me to talk about gold and silver, uh, and, and I'll try to put that together too uh, while we go look at some charts together. You know how this works if you've been following this video segment. So what I need you to do, if you're not there already, is go to my website, traderschoice.net. There is a link in the description of this video. Go to my website. Let's watch this video. Well, watch this video there. And we're going to cover all the charts there. We're going to look at gold and silver and the dollar and the bond market. Of course, the stock market. And try to come away with, I don't know, our, our, our best scenario. Uh, as to what we can expect moving forward and how we can capitalize on it. So let's do that. Uh, hopefully you're on my website. Let's go look at some stuff together. Let's start off how we usually do. Look straight down from this video. You will see this is ticker SPY or the ETF that tracks the S&P 500. Now again, plain to see uh, a pretty much screaming uptrend uh, for the past couple of months of course you're gonna get these more or less random walks with that upward drift here now what I want you to do is look at that day trading chart just next to it day trading chart look at that real quick you will see that it's possible that we are topping out here uh, could we see a pullback earlier in the week you know Probably, I personally would like to see that for a, for a myriad of, of reasons, but I want to put a perspective on a few things here. Let's look over right at the bond market chart underneath that chat room. This is this is epic. Look at those those green candlesticks. That was the effort that was made over the past several days here just to prop up that bond market to spark a rally here in that bond market keep rates suppressed that would push cash into the stock market why because there's nowhere else to go it's it's an engineered environment of risk now there's a little bit of a fly in the ointment here look below that bond market chart you're gonna see the dollar bullish ETF you got that uh, screaming uptrend. Now, I have covered this at length. Uh, there is a compensatory mechanism going on here, and you can see how the market has reacted lately, the stock market, to a 10-year yield that rises above or starts hitting that 3% mark. It doesn't like it. Stocks start to sell off. So, what this market does this week and I've been thinking about this since the market closed yesterday, is 100% dependent on what happens with that 10-year yield. If, they're, if they can keep that suppressed, stocks will finish the week higher. If they can't do it, for whatever reason, because look, here's the truth. These world central banks and the powers that be here, Wall Street banks, banks around the world, who are obviously buying up this debt to keep this all propped up, understand, by them getting into the market and doing this and creating this environment of risk, inflates the stock market, they get long the stock market, all the investment banks do this, and then once the market sells off, well, their traders, you know, start betting against the market. And this is how they legally, legally steal cash or, or uh, well, maybe it's not, maybe steal is kind of a harsh word here, but get on the right side of the trade. The only issue is, I mean, they're doing it. So yes, it is stealing in many, many ways. It's not like you or me trading this market here, going on public information. They obviously have a, another, another perspective on it if you get my drift here. Um, so that's really where this whole week is going to go with regard to 
of the markets. It's all about that 10-year yield, period, the end. Um, let's just look at a few other things. Let's go to that chart here right underneath uh, my video we are watching. Let's, let's put in ticker QQQ. All right, tech sector ETF. Look at this. Uh, this is interesting here. Again, a screaming uptrend. And either we're topping out here uh, or, or it's going to go higher. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. And I'm going to be honest with you just looking at this. Let's go over to the day trading chart and put in the QQQ together. Uh, my trade sideways. I, I, I really can't tell you by looking at this. It, again, this also, this is, this is the tech sector. This is all dependent on the 10-year yield. Let's do one more thing while I got you here. Go to the chart right underneath here, my swing trading chart. Let's put in ticker XLF. All right. Financial sector ETF. I've been talking about this a lot lately. Looks like we're kind of rolling over here just a little bit. AIG, you know what happened to AIG, right? Got slammed on, on an earnings miss here. And I thought this had the potential, and it still may, to pull the financial sector down with it, which would pressure stocks. And you, could you imagine the effort that's going to go on to prop up that bond market here? Look, it's all about the bond market. I can't stress that enough. It's fake, 1,000%. And it's going to be rigged 1,000% until they can't rig it anymore. Uh, and we're already running into a lot of problems here. We understand the Treasury Department has now has got to expand their bond offerings because we can't even fund our the day-to-day the, the -day activity of our own country. Meanwhile, we're in an economic boom. You remember that, right? You heard that somewhere? All right. Now, let, let's just cover a few other things that I've been getting so many questions on. Swing ch trading chart again. Let's put in GLD, enter. All right, this is the exchange traded fund, the ETF um, of, of paper gold. First of all, let's talk about the paper markets. Number one, if you follow my work, you're gonna know exactly what I'm about to say. They have no bearing on reality, they are not real. The paper markets for both gold and silver, silver SLV, exist for one reason and one reason only, to get into the market and rig it. When you see, for example, let's say gold puts on a, a, a gain for a couple of days, and all of a sudden, some mysterious entity out here dumps a huge amount of contracts onto the market, paper contracts, and gold just gets slammed down. It's so simple to see that this is fake. Number one, when you see a move like that, when, like, when some entity dumps a large amount of con paper contracts onto the market like these is paper contracts it's not like gold being moved from one vault to another it's not real these are naked contracts in other words there's nothing backing them so they don't exist Do you understand however they, this does affect the price of gold and or silver virtually every single time and I'm not making this up when you see contracts like that dumped onto the market they're being done by whatever entity is doing it using a market order. Dear, if you're a trader, you know what this means. You can place a limit order or a market order. When you place a market order for anything, well, I don't care if it's a, uh, like Apple stock, for example, or, or a paper derivative of gold and or silver, anything, when you place a market order to either buy or to sell, let's th say to sell, if someone dumps a bunch of contracts here with regard to gold onto the market, <clears throat> What that means is they are willing to take what the market wants to give, anything, basically. So what does that do? It has the effect of driving the price down rapidly. All right. So when you see no entity, no individual, no trader, no investment bank would dump a large amount of shares on, with anything onto the market using a market order, because you're looking to get ripped off. You would put in a limit order, meaning, all right, I'm willing to sell my asset, but I won't take less than this. By putting it in a market order, you'll take anything. It's the same thing with, let's see if you, uh, you wanted to get into the market and buy calls on company stock XYZ, and you put in a market order to buy, you're going to get ripped off. Never do this. I never do that. When I place my orders, there are always limit orders. This is what I'm willing to pay for something, and this is what I'm willing to let it go for. You understand? Anyway. Going down here, looking at this chart of gold, uh, GLD, paper, paper derivative of gold, you can see what's going on here. It's, it's unbelievable. Now, 
if you look over at that dollar chart again, because the paper derivative here of gold is is priced in U.S. dollars, the stronger the dollar uh, gets, the weaker technically paper gold and or silver should be. But as, as you've noticed, I am certain, sometimes this doesn't always play out to be true because again, there is no price discovery mechanism here with regard to to the paper derivatives of gold. Now let's put in SLV. Silver, SLV, enter. Same kind of thing here, people. Uh, in the short term, in my opinion, um, we're going to continue to see pressure here. Uh, short term. How, how long is short term? Months to be until here's the issue. Because of the blatant crime. This is this is a, a, a crime scene in progress. I, I, I hope you understand that with regard to the paper derivatives of gold and silver. This whole market is a crime scene in progress because nothing is allowed to be priced according to what's happening. Uh, in, in, in the, the dead market is the largest market of them all and I've covered this a thousand gazillion times. Why do you believe that world central banks have decided to take the largest part of the market get in here, artificially suppress rates, because again, everything prices off of what's happening here in the debt market. You understand? So when you have a debt market that's being deliberately rigged, nothing has a real price discovery mechanism behind it. No one is smart enough to know what the actual value of, of what the stock market would be or anything else. It, there's no way to tell because the market is not being allowed to determine fair value. That's the only job of these markets, people. You know that. I don't care if it's housing market. I don't care what market. Their job is to determine fair value. We don't have that. Not one asset class today, and I mean that, not one has a real price discovery mechanism behind it, people. It's insane. Now look, with all that said, how do you and I make this work for us? I mean, that's really the bottom line. Coal and markets, what they're going to do, frankly, it's just, what is it? it? It comes down to how we can make this work for us. And that's really what this is all about, to me. I don't care. You know that. I don't care where the market goes. I don't care what the market does. I just want to be on the right side of it. That's the truth. One way or the other. Now, with regard to gold and silver, since we know, beyond any shadow of a doubt, that there's no price discovery mechanism here. They are being rigged to the nth degree. The debt market is in the biggest bubble on the face of the earth. We want to take the opposite side of that trade, meaning you and I want to be holding the hard asset. Forget about GLD, SLV, paper derivatives up the wazoo. Don't, I don't care. They can do what they want. Let them play their game. We're going to play ours. Our game is betting against the debt, becoming our own central bank, period. You know what that means. For the long run, I can't imagine a better place to be in the world than in precious metals, more specifically, physical silver. You all know that. Let's talk about the stock market real quick, because I've been getting slammed with questions. I've been talking a lot lately about credit spreads. I'm just going to cover this real briefly here, because I've been talking about it so much. Uh, you know, you can make money in this market by buying a call, betting the market's going to go higher, or, or, or buying a put, buying a put and or a call. Put, you're hoping the market's going to go lower, calls, you're hoping the market's going to go higher. You better be dead on with your timing and you could make a, a, a frankly staggering amount of money playing that game if you get it right. You can also lose a lot of money too, but if you stay on the right side of the trade over a period of time, you're going to do fine. I've been using credit spreads for a while now and I've been talking about it for the past, I don't know, month or so here. Um, it's another way of taking advantage of the market where you can capitalize on it in three ways. By buying a credit spread, um, you're actually taking up two positions. You're selling uh, calls and or puts onto the market and you're covering the loss by buying a call and or a put. Um, now look, again, this is on you and I'm not trying to sell you a darn thing, but if you look here in the upper left hand corner of this page, you're going to see my brief here, get paid up front to trade stocks. The profits from this go to an animal charity. So you do what you want. You don't even have to do, if you, if you're not, if you don't even, it, it's $10 and 9 dollars 
If you want to learn this on your own, you can just go to Google and probably, you know, Google credit spreads and find out what you need. So I, I don't care what you do. This is for you. It's not for me. I know how to do this. Um, but credit spread, credit spreads are a way, instead of having one uh, bet on how the market's going to work, for example, you buy a call in or a put, well, you know what? That asset better move in the direction that you believe it's going to go and quickly because you lose from time decay. Now, if you have a credit spread, you have three ways to capitalize on, on, on your bet on whatever that asset's going to go, wherever it's going to go. Number one, obviously, if it moves in direction of how you uh, placed your credit spread. Number two, if it goes nowhere and trades sideways with the same price, you still make cash because why? Time decay is on your side, being a net seller into the market. Uh, and you can also make cash, believe it or not, even if the trade goes against you. Uh, depending on how you set up that credit spread, it's not that hard. That's all. I'm not going to talk about this. I'm, I'm getting kind of sick talking about it because I keep getting more questions about it. Just do your own homework, people. Go out there, Google it, learn about credit spreads. It's that simple. All right, with that said, I hope I covered some important things here. I think I have, especially with regard to the paper, gold, and silver markets. And again, this market this week is all about, in fact, from here on in, is all about the 10-year yield, in my opinion. And the dollar, again, there's that compensatory mechanism. The stronger the dollar gets, now I hate lines in the sand, you know that, the, the lower the threshold is going to be with regard to the 10-year yield as to how the market reacts in a negative way. You understand? If they can punish that dollar, push that dollar lower, and the yield rises, the yield on the 10-year rises, Again, that, that's going to affect the market in a way that wouldn't be as negative. You understand? It's, uh, I know it's kind of a little weird to get your head around, but basically what it comes down to this is we want to see, well, what they want to see is the dollar weaker to push out the red line in the sand with regard to the 10-year yield. If the dollar keeps getting stronger, look at that chart there, that's going to pull forward the negative effects of the 10-year yield being high, you understand? But if they can keep it in that sweet spot like they're doing now, well, you know where stocks are going to go because it's a rigged game. All right, awfully long video, but I think it's been important, covered a ton of things here. Uh, I want to hear from you. If you enjoyed this segment, please let me know, and I will see you Monday.